DJ Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne the God. I congratulate you, Hall of Famers. So I to be in the presence Thank of you. radio royalty. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. This is a big deal. Big deal. I think that y'all have a certain amount of respect for, you know, what everybody else does. And y'all are just the best at what y'all do. We love y'all, man. Thank you for being the people's champs. Probably the greatest. I'll drill y'all. Good morning, USA! Yo, 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 yo,
And it's an independently owned Shell station. So people were going crazy. They said they stormed that Shell gas station in Rancho Cordova, California, after word spread on social media. And it ended up costing the gas station about $20,000, by the way. So now, then they, they, they You'll get a, into heaven. They're doing a GoFundMe for me, They right? do have a GoFundMe. Okay. And so they're trying to raise $20,000 and because they want to repay his old employer. So they want to raise the money that was lost. So far, it's not. And you were right with that. Tatum. He had 27, 23, 26, 28, and 12. You were correct. Warriors in six. I see. Step the Splash Brothers is gonna show up big tonight. Step I, Curry gonna score fifty. I see Warriors in six. They gonna score thirty plus. But All I right, and <laughs> I didn't know that you could just do that. You could just set the gas prices yourself. Well, he's the manager, so he has to. You know, when the gas prices change, somebody has to change them, and it's an independently owned station. Damn it, man! I, I, he ma- he made a mistake, right? But yes. he did help a lot of people. It's a twenty thousand dollar mistake. I'm sure a lot of people felt like that was a blessing. You know, except what I mean? for the people that independently own that gas station. <laughs> That's true. They lost twenty thousand dollars. I, I agree, but you know, you got to look at there's, there's two sides to everything. Yes, they lost twenty thousand dollars, but then a lot of people got to fill up their gas tank today or that day. All right, now monthly car payments have hit a record high of seven hundred and twelve dollars last month. So that is the average uh, monthly car ba- payment. They said that new vehicle prices average it's about forty seven thousand dollars. That's the second highest on record ever. Let me tell you guys, I, I got a Ford Explorer, right, fully loaded. It was one seventy eight three years ago. That was the lease on that car. I had to turn that car in, and I wanted the same car again. And for the same car again, that car is five ninety eight. From one seventy to five ninety, that is ridiculous. For the same car, nothing different. That's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Payments yeah, are I ended up roof. getting a new car, and oof, I don't even talk about it's it. It's ridiculous. All right, and the federal. And don't Reserve, y'all wish the car dealer had made a mistake and sold it to y'all for yes, a lower I price? Definitely. <laughs> right. And I can guarantee you, they'll be like, actually, this is what you owe. Yeah. I All right, now the Federal did. Reserve has hiked interest rates by 075 percent. And that's significant. They raised those rates yesterday, escalating a strategy. They're trying to increase borrowing costs to dial back inflation. How does that help? We just talked about payments are high and they're going to raise interest rates some more? Well, they want to... So what that does is, in theory, it should slash inflation by slowing the economy and eating away at demand. So that's the strategy. So if you remember during the pandemic when people weren't spending money like that, that's why they lowered it so much in order to increase people's uh, purchasing. But now they want to slow it down. And so that's going to increase everything from credit card fees to mortgage rates. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. It's up, baby. Yeah, they're saying this does show confidence in the health of the job market because there's a lot of jobs available now, but the speed with which interest rates are expected to go up underscores the concern about the cost of the soaring cost of living also. So let me ask you a question. Yesterday I was driving by and I passed Burger King. Burger King said, we're hiring. We're paying $15 an hour, right? You want to pick up an extra job? Yes, $15 an hour, right? But if interest rates go over 6% to purchase a home, even a small home or whatever it may be, how could you possibly afford it with interest rates at six, seven percent, and fifth, and you're making fifteen dollars an hour? How and does that work? That's exactly why inflation is a problem, sir. Because it's like even if you do have that job and you're bringing home money, everything's going up, so you're kind of in the same position. Yes, credit card rates going up, interest rates going up. You're talking about car going up. So if I make, I mean, the rates will now, en- end up going back down. You know, just right now they're trying to slow down the economy. It's not going to stay there. So I mean, the only thing we can do at this point is thug it out. Like, that's just the truth to the matter. And like, there's, I, there's, yeah. there's really nothing you can do. Like, you know, you, you have to buy gas. You have to pay yes. your car payments. You have to pay your rent. Like, you have no choice. So, you know, if, if you can pick up another job or do some extra things to make some money, you just, you got to. What happened to all those crypto people? Remember the crypto people that was like... I mean, the same thing that happened to the stock market people. $19. Everything's down. But some people look at it like, hey, it's on sale right now. If you have the money if to buy it. you got extra money. Yeah. If you have the money, which a and lot of people don't, let's be clear: stock market and crypto and all that is for extra money. It's not like you're supposed to be doing that uh, with money that you can't spare. If you can't spare it, don't do it. In a capitalist society, the rich keep getting richer. That's all it is. And when situa- mm-hmm. when situations like this happen and people are down, people that actually have money they take advantage. Sadly, that's just the way the system is designed. Mm-hmm. I'm going to Burger King after this job. All right, I saw well, a commercial yesterday it. for a quarter pounder. That thing looks so good. <laughs> did it? <laughs> it did, man. Uh, that, what that quarter pound of commercial? They made that quarter pound look so damn tasty on TV yesterday, boy. They got chicken fries over there now. I was like, I can tell. Oh, the, I don't like. I don't like how them chicken fries look. Yeah. I, I like. I don't like my chicken in fry form. I saw. Yeah. I, I know the Burger King commercial you got. Drop on the clues, Mom's McDonald's and Burger King. Y'all got some tasty ass looking absolutely uh, commercials. commercials. Yes. And the way food costs right now, four dollars for everything. 
Four dollars for a whole menu sounds like a good bargain. Yeah, what is that? Like you can get everything for four dollars. We got I see that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know we trading good health, but still, <laughs> Jesus Christ, goodness man. gracious, my fat ass. You know, I said for four dollars. What I can get all that. Feed it. All right, Let well. me do an edible. Let me do 20 milligrams real quick and pull up the McDonald's. I'll be good. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. I'm dialing. I'm dialing. Hey, what you doing, man? I'm dialing. I'm calling you. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. <laughs> Hello, who's this? And this is D-Bell from Houston. What's going on, DJ Envy? D-Bell, what's up, man? Get it off your chest, brother. Well, well first of all, good morning, you know, Charlamagne, the girl, Angela Yee. D-Bell, peace, first King. Of all, I got two. I got two things I want to get off my chest. First of all, DJ Envy, I don't understand why you still want to come down to Houston and embarrass yourself with this car Uh-oh. show. Man, did you not did you not see those cars that Lynn had at Rick Ross car show, man? And you still want to come down here and embarrass yourself? I seen them old ass cars. Yeah, we come actually my cars just landed in those, Houston. Those cars are called classics, sir. Uh, the twenty cars uh loaded and uh yeah, we gonna have some fun, man. You are you coming to the show? Man, I'm not gonna lie, I gotta work that day, but I'm still coming. I'm okay. That's what it is. Get there early, man. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm actually uh when I land in tomorrow, I'm I'm gonna pull up. I think we're going to drive all 20 cars to Turkey Leg Hut uh, tomorrow. So we're going to pull up in front of it, and um, we're going to eat some turkey legs, and then we're going to head over to the car show. But, yeah, come on out. Bring the kids. It's a family fun day. Rides, amusement, um, amusement games. We're going to have, uh, what, what do they call the, uh, the aerobics? What's the aerobics? Yeah. Aerobics. The, uh, double Dutch. Double Dutch aerobics. Oh, double Dutch like, aerobics. Oh, we, we're going to teach, teach kids how to, to, to uh, jump double Dutch. There's going to be face painting. It's so many different things. It's, it's a family fun day. It's going to bring the kids, man. Uh, I'm almost certainly going to do that. Um, second thing is, so as far as occupation, I'm a truck driver. I deliver gas around Houston, right? Mm-hmm. I can't I can't stand when I'm out there dropping gas. I be having, like, it be random people walking up to me like, hey, Hey, can you fill up my gas tank? Hey, can you meet me around the corner and, and put gas in my t- bro? Do you want me to go? Do you want me to do federal time in prison? Like, I'm I'm not understanding. Like, make it make sense. Damn, you get federal time for that? What? Me stealing gas? What? I didn't know that. Damn, you get ten plus years. Oh damn! I did not know. They that. don't. They don't care about your livelihood. They just want some free gas. They just want some free gas. You, you, can't, you, you, can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't blame them though. Yeah, I mean. For wanting to put, uh, not caring about if you go to jail. I'm no, so, for I'm wanting sure free gas. I'm I mean, sure there's somebody well, y'all are so that rich that y'all do not see what's going on with other people. Like, sh- it, it, imagine it, going up to somebody who has a job to do and asking them to steal something and give it to imagine you. Imagine not being I able mean, to take your on. kids to school or being able to get to work because you can't fill up your gas tank. I'm That's what people are at right now. Somebody to risk their livelihood. D. Bell, you see what you what argument you started? I'm just saying, like, people are going through that. Act like you can't understand why people are asking. Asking for free gas is crazy. Yes, I can understand why they would ask. I'm not saying he should do it. I mean, I, I get, I get your point. I get your point. <laughs> like, let me go to the bank. Give me some money. <laughs> yes. As if, as if I'm Give me some free money. Like, yeah, pull your car up. I got you. Like, come on, man. Let's be, let's be serious. Well, deep but, Hey, I greatly appreciate y'all time. Hey, follow me on Instagram. Oh, by the way, I'm having my first child. I got a daughter on the way. She's gonna congrats, be bro. Congratulations, congrats. brother. Yay. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna be the best father ever. But hey, follow me on Instagram, DBell400. Again, DBell400. Follow me. DBell, can I ask you one last question? Yes, sir. Can you put that gas truck in the back of the uh, car <laughs> show so I can fill up my car? Hey, man, I don't speak no English, man. Me speak no English. <laughs> I'm going to try that at the bank. Can y'all just give me you. some money? I'll make a deal with you. I'll make a deal with you, DJ Iggy. If you, if you outshine uh, 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 Lynn at the car show, I will be sure to fill all y'all gas tanks up for free on me. And then if he loses, then if he loses, then what? Hey, man, I need, I need, I need all y'all booked. I need a book from uh, DJ Envy. I need a book from all the books from Charlemagne the God. And I need a, uh, a, a bag of your uh, coffee, uh, uh, Angela Yee. I think you should have asked Envy to give you all his cars if he loses. That sounds yeah. like more of a fair trade. D-Bell, I'll see you at the car show. And, and pull up on me, D-Bell. I got you with a book, brother. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Let's go! 
This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're man or black. Say it with your chest. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. So if you got something on your mind, let it out. Hello, who's this? Hey, good morning. Peace and blessing. This is Sean Stone with Sean Stone TV. Good morning, Breakfast Club. What Sean up, Sean Stone, peace, King. Get it off your chest. Hey, Charlamagne, good morning. DJ Envy, good morning. Uh, Angela Yee, good morning. Good morning. Oh, uh, man, gas prices. It's crazy high out here. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to tell people. Uh, hey, man. I went to the gas station recently for $8, man. Now, I remember when $8 to, you know, get your thing up to the halfway. Yeah, nah, not anymore. That, that, that's, a ga- that's a gallon and a, and a half. Not even a half nowadays. Man, it's crazy. So I just want to shout out the guy that charged 69 cents for gas. <laughs> you know I mean? And Charlamagne, don't try to twist it, too. I didn't try to switch nothing. I am happy that that guy gave y'all 69. Hello, who's this? Yo, this is Nicole. What's up, Nicole? Get it off your chest. Yeah, I just wanted to do a birthday shout out to my husband, Jimmy Ray Parker Jr. He turned 33 today, so I want to say happy birthday, baby, and I love you. Happy birthday to him, all right? What y'all doing for his birthday? So he works today. He he works for the bus uh, for Via down here in San Antonio. So he works today, but y'all got the weekend. I'm gonna take him out to go eat. Y'all got the weekend. Now he works the weekend too. Damn. So when's his next yeah, off day? He be, go- he be going in at like three in the morning. So his next off day is probably Monday. Okay. Jeez. We'll plan right. something nice for him. I got him a whole bunch of stuff. I got him like a tool set and everything and some shoes and some cologne. So whenever we go out, he's going to be fresh. Okay. You know what's crazy? I saw somebody hey, yesterday. They were talking about, um. They, 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 they asked the young lady. I think I saw it on Ball Alert. And I guess mm-hmm. they, were trying, they were trying to shame him because he asked the young lady, is there any way we can find something to do and hang out where we don't have to have to spend any money? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, why are y'all shaming him for this? That's a legitimate question right now. People don't have it. Well, not for nothing. You know, when when, when I was dating my wife, we didn't have any money. So exactly. We used to drive around. Well, I don't know if this is a good idea anymore. Yeah, but we used to we drive just around about- rich neighborhoods and look at the big houses because that was what we mm. would do. And like, we would, you know, it, like, oh, one day we would have that. And we would drive and, you know, rich neighborhoods. Yeah, don't do that now. Yeah, People are going to call the police yeah. on you. You could definitely yeah. go for a nice walk outside and go and, to the park. I don't know. It's kind of violent. Yeah, out there's right some, some people staking our neighborhood right now. You, you can't be driving around neighborhoods looking at houses right. in this climate. You're right. Okay. Hello, who's this? Hello. Hello, good morning. Yes, how are you? Uh, we're doing well. Get it off your chest, brother. Uh, yes, sir. I had a question for Charlemagne the guy real quick, man. Yes, sir. Uh, Charlemagne, I was wondering if, if there's any possibility that uh, you can help me with uh, mental therapy or receiving it. Um, cause I know you're a big advocate for it. That's uh, easy. Right now, uh, yeah, right now I don't really have the health insurance. Um, to, to really afford, you know, affordable mental, you know, therapy. So, I'm wondering if you can help me out with that. That's easy. I mean, that's what my organization does, my uh, the Mental Wealth Alliance. So, I'm, I'm gonna get your email, and um, we're gonna we're gonna set something up for you, brother. Hold on. Where you okay? at? Uh, Baltimore, man. Okay, we'll figure it out. I'm gonna put you on hold. Hold get on. Don't hang up. Okay. All right. Hello. Who's this? This is John from Houston. What's up, Homicide? Good morning, DJ Envy. John from Houston. What's up, brother? Get it off your chest. Hey. I want to say thank you guys for last month for donating the money to uh, get the uh, the pillows at the homeless community. It was a blast. We got almost 260 pillows we bought. We fed with 400 homeless. And we thank you guys so much. We love you guys for your support. We donated and one more thing. Yes, sir. How okay. do I redeem the tickets uh, for Sunday for the car show? What do you mean? I, I didn't get any. How do I get the tickets for the car show? You bought, you bought tickets or did I said I was going to give you tickets? Oh, you said you're going to give us tickets? Okay, then, yeah, the Mercedes show? put it, yeah. I sent it to Mercedes. The name is on the list, so uh, I have your full information when you gave it to me before. Just She'll be right at the door. We have a list of people yeah. that are coming in. And I hope I get to uh, see you, meet you on Sunday. So I'll definitely be a blessing. I, I'll be there the whole time. I ain't going nowhere. I'll be there the whole time. Give him a hug, bro. <laughs> hey, uh, Charlamagne, thank you so much, and we love you, brothers. Thank you guys. Have a blessed day. And be safe when you travel to you this weekend. And I'll see you then, brothers. <laughs> All right, brother. Be love safe. You, Bring your family out, too, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, you can hit us up. Now we got rumors on the way, Yee? Yes. Imagine making up a story because you want to back out of something, out of going to work. Well, we'll tell you who lied and said that he actually had to back out of a tour because he was watching the solar eclipse without wearing eye protection. My goodness. All right. We'll get into that next. That's a good one. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. What's going on? Yeah. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. All right. Well, Joey Badass does admit that the solar eclipse stunt that he did, he 
uh, said those things because he was quitting the Logic Tour. If you guys recall, this happened uh, back in 2017. He said, am I crazy for watching the eclipse today with no glasses? I've sun gazed before and afterwards saw colors for a whole day. I didn't die, though. This ain't the first solar eclipse, and I'm pretty sure our ancestors ain't have no fancy eyewear. Also pretty sure they ain't, all ain't go blind. Then the next day, he tweeted out, Due to unforeseen circumstances, my Cleveland, Chicago, and Toronto shows on the Everybody Tour are canceled. All right, so now he's on social media, and he said, Speaking of solar eclipses, you know I never got any type of eye damage from that solar eclipse-ish that happened. I just really wanted an excuse to be off the Logic Tour. Blogs literally created a story, and I went with it because it was convenient for me at the time. But it was also funny to see how gullible people are. It taught me a valuable lesson. Whatever the media puts out in unison, people will simply believe, even if the source isn't validated. Scary world. No, we know that. That was, he, that's that was five years ago. It's only gotten worse since then. I wonder if he could get sued for that, though. And he said, and logic is my N-word, by the way. I ain't with no logic slander. The tour just wasn't serving me well at the time. Well, he's half your N-word. Enjoy that. He's stupid. But I wonder if he could get sued for that. Because, you know, you're you running a tour and you're saying, I can't do the tour anymore because of eye Well, damage. he probably told logic the real reason. Mm. And then that was just something public. Okay. So I don't know that you could get sued for that. Yeah, and he, and he, he never said that, right? They ran with it. Well, I guess he put that. Um, yeah, and blogs, that blogs out, ran with that story. And then the next day, he never said that. Though. He yeah, never, he said, never hey, said I'm quitting the tour quitting. because mm. I looked at the sun. All right, now Monique and Netflix have reached a settlement in the lawsuit, the discrimination lawsuit that was citing racial and gender biases. According to the Hollywood Reporter, they're saying that the uh, two sides of the legal disagreement have moved to dismiss the suit, and specifics regarding the agreement have not been made public. So the suit so is dismissed so that they came to some sort of agreement behind the scenes and dismissed it. Was it monetary mm. or we don't know? We don't know. It's, we just said it's not public. Mm. So I don't know what, if there was any monetary compensation mm -hmm. or whatever, but they have moved on past that. Okay, Shaquille O'Neal has paid a tab of over $25,000 and that was for the entire restaurant. Uh, he was on a date at Julon Club in New York City, and not only did he give a generous tip to the wait staff, he also covered the tab for everybody that was there. It was 40 tables that night. Shout to Shaq. He, he does that a lot, though, but shout to Shaq, man. Mm-hmm. So, must have been a nice surprise for everybody who was there. Like, what? No, Bill? Well, thank mm -hmm. you so much. It's, I'm telling you, especially in this era, when you re even, even though people that were probably there probably had money, but just when you can give somebody a little bit of relief, do it. Now Shaq does that a Sweet lot. To Shaq. He'll be in Best Buy and buy people stuff. He'll be in restaurants. He'll, he does that a lot. Sneaker stores. Shaq, and congratulations to Snoop Dogg and his wife. They celebrated their 25th wedding anniversary. Nice. They went on vacation to Bora Bora. So shout out to them. Congrats uh, to Snoop. Now his wife, Shante Brodus, tweeted out, We go together real bad. After all these years, <laughs> we still look at each other the same. That's dope. Alexa play anniversary from Tony Tony Tony. We go together real bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Salute to Snoop. He said that was his first vacation in 30 years. 30 years, yeah. But I guess because he's always traveling. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, does it really work? If you're having fun doing it? Yeah, it's the best work is when you can have fun doing it. Mm -hmm. All right, Eminem and CeeLo are prepping their Elvis soundtrack single, The King and I. It's actually coming out today. And The King and I will hit all services at noon by the way, so some people have already previewed some of this, and here's the song. All right, so get ready for that new song today from Elvis. And that is your rumor report. All right, from Elvis? Mm -hmm, it's a movie. Oh, oh, from the side. Oh, okay, I was like, oh, All they right. got old levels vocals. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. Now we got front page news. Next, what are we talking about? Yes, and this weather, man. Listen, we, we've been telling you guys about this heat wave that's going on. It's a record heat wave. One hundred million people affected. We'll give you some updates. All right. Now today is uh, Tupac's birthday, and you know he cares if don't nobody else care. <laughs> Tupac cares. Do we have any Pac joints? Can we play? Did he put one in? No. Eddie, you put it in. Hey. Wow, times have changed when you uh, have to put a Tupac record into a hip-hop and R&B station. All right, well, we'll, wow. be, we'll be playing some Pac joints this morning. Times have really changed. Front page news is next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same.
Angela Yee here. The General Insurance is a quality insurance company that's been saving people money for nearly 60 years. Switch to The General and you could save over $500. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Tonight, the Warriors take on the Boston Celtics for Game 6. They wrap it up tonight. Warriors in 6. Uh, I expect Steph Curry to have a fantastic game. I said 50 points are better. I'm just talking, though. Hey, but uh, Game 6, Clay is definitely going to show up. But I feel like they close it out tonight. Nah, I think Boston takes this one at home. But I don't see it. We'll see. Now, what else we got, Yeezy? All right. Well, the record heat wave is continuing with 100 million people affected. More than 20 states are seeing dangerously hot temperatures this week. Mm. And they're saying in Chicago, they actually hit 98 degrees, and that's their warmest weather since 2012. And in Detroit, 97 degrees yesterday. It's the hottest recorded June temperature in the city since 2012. Now, this heat is causing death in Kansas uh, cattle. So they're saying an estimated 10,000 um, head of fat cattle have, have died because of this. So final death numbers continue to come in, but that was just an early number. Now, listen, you know I'm from South Carolina, the low country, 843 Monk's Corner all day, so I'm used to hell-like conditions, but when I was in Dallas this weekend, I've never felt mm-hmm. no heat like that. Like, we was in the car, and it said it was 108 degrees, and when you stepped outside, it felt every bit of it, to the mm-hmm. point where I was like, look, while we're outside, we're not going to walk around too much. Just everybody be <laughs> as still as possible, <laughs> okay? Drink a lot of water, and it was one of those things, like, we was at Bishop T.D. Jake's birthday party, so while people was walking in, you just getting a wave until I can get inside, okay? <laughs> Ain't nobody walking over to greet nobody right now. It's too hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's really dangerous in Nevada. They're saying with the dry conditions and extreme heat, it's opportunity for wildfires. Wow. So that's another danger. All right, now today's January 6th hearings are continuing. And uh, the focus today is going to be about Vice President, former Vice President Mike Pence. And so committee aides are saying that Trump's pressure campaign against Pence directly contributed to the violence on January 6th. They said Mike Pence's life was in danger as rioters were chanting, hang Mike Pence. Jeez. There's also going to be new materials and documents about Mike Pence's movements on January 6th and what he was doing when the Senate chamber was forced to evacuate after rioters breached the U.S. Capitol. The hearing is also going to focus on Trump's attorney, John Eastman's theory that there he was that Pence had the authority to overturn the election results when Congress certified Joe Biden's victory. It was a theory that Trump's own White House attorneys said was not true. They rejected that, but his allies embraced what John Eastman had to say. And so that's going to also uh, basically they, they have a bunch of emails that they sent related to the efforts to overturn the election that could shed new light on Donald Trump's attorney's thinking in the days leading up to January 6th. And they are reiterating Pence did not have the authority to subvert the election. So, yeah, I mean, I always thought that was so strange that the fact that all those people was chanting hang Mike Pence and uh, they didn't get charged with threatening a government official like that's a felony. Like, that's a felony. That's punishable by up to five years of of prison. That should have been a layup. Right. So, you know, we've been encouraging people to make sure that you pay attention to what's going on. And, you know, Donald Trump is right now weighing whether to announce his 2024 bid before the midterms. And so his advisors are divided on the timing of what should happen. He's been talking to people and trying to figure out what he should do. Um, he could announce now. It would this this case will impact nothing unless they're going to actually press charges on Donald Trump and they they already said that they have enough to indict him. Unless they're going to do that, it's, it's not going to impact nothing. By the way, they could indict him and it still wouldn't impact nothing. His supporters are diehard. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that is your front page news. All right. Thank you, Miss Yee. Now, when we come back, Kirk Franklin will be joining us. He has a new project dropping. He's on tour, and we're gonna kick it with him. All right. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne the God. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. We have Kirk Franklin. Welcome back. <laughs> man, listen, y'all are making this home for me, man. I'm totally grateful for that. Now, you are running around like you are a brand new artist, like you're starving. Ah. You was in uh, Toronto, uh, and uh, they said you had plane trouble, so you drove all the way from Toronto. Bro, bro. They and that's did. not brand 
brand new artist business, by the way, because it was a private jet problem. No, but it still broke down. But he could have said, <laughs> "That's not I'm no brand new artist but business." He said, "I'm not coming." <laughs> but he said, "You know what? He got in the car and they drove all the way down." There. It's the Breakfast Club. <laughs> How long was that drive? I think it was like eight out. It was like eight or nine hours. Goodness gracious! Yeah, Do you prefer yeah. driving over flying anyway, though? You know, it just kind of depends on where you're driving. You mm -hmm. know, it kind of depends where you're driving. I would have preferred flying. Absolutely. That right there, but because the uh, tour bus was driving so fast, all the eggs were falling out of the fridge. And yeah, man, it's like, it was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> Last night, people were falling out of bunks because we were speeding trying to get here. You know, mm -hmm. again, it's the breakfast club. Well, no, we appreciate you. You're Kirk Franklin, so let's not forget that. Absolutely. I mean, no, this man. is a big deal, and you know we need your energy at times, too. Oh, you're very kind. Well, all man. the time, because there's so much going on in the world. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is, man. And that's why I'm glad to be here to talk about, man, this uh, new collab with these kids. And I got their hat on because their bus uh, is like about 30, 40 minutes behind. <laughs> and so, you know, um, and yeah, trust me, because the studio was supposed to be full of them. So really today, man, I want to just really celebrate man these kids that i want america to know there's a community mm -hmm. of of young people that know about them but there's a whole nother community that uh that i really want to introduce them to well tell us about them they're yeah, in yeah, man. city yeah yeah Where yes, they sir. from tell us about them are, are they signed to you or? no 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 What's no the they were founded by these two incredible guys uh tony and jj and tony and jj were very prolific in the contemporary christian space writing some really huge christian songs and they put together this collective of like these little young juggernauts like I call them the Avengers and it's like a collective of these young worship kids and so over the last few years it has exploded like we're on tour right now and the average attendance the average attendance is 10,000 Wow. Yeah, it's a sold out tour. So Maverick City, all right, so correct me or I just want you to explain the inception of it. So was it more like a writing camp when it first yes. started? Okay, yes. so tell me how this yes. all happened. Okay, and I'm giving it to you second and it's because remember this happened outside of me you know mm -hmm. I'm just here really because I was uh, really really blessed to be part of this collab album you know kind of like you know how you saw uh, Lincoln Park and Jay I'm not calling myself Jay I'm not calling myself Jay <laughs> you know you. I'm Kirk you know um, but um, they were songwriters that came from like these worship, I mean, they were just, they were, they were like worship leaders at the church. Mm -hmm. And they came together as like young writers up under Tony and JJ, mm -hmm. who, you know, shout out to them because everything started with the vision from them. Mm -hmm. And then they, they just put these kids together and they just started writing in like houses and cribs and the songs started to take off. And what really blew them up uh, um, was YouTube. They were posting all of their worship stuff on YouTube. And man, man, they would get like 50, 60 million views. And yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's just a, it's beautiful to see what they've done in the space. A lot of it has been in the contemporary Christian space. And now they are also kind of, you know, just, just really gaining momentum in gospel. And for people that don't know, uh, historically, contemporary Christian uh, has mainly been non African American, mm -hmm. and gospel has been mainly African American. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I've always hated that. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Contemporary Christian has always been more of our other brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And then gospel has been mainly black and brown folk. What made what made you go on a roll with them and do a project with them? You know, because you've done numerous projects, I'm sure they, they have done. So what made you say, you know what, I'm going to extend my arm and, and introduce them to the people that are already my fans, the people that follow me, the people that, that are already been following me? What made you do that? Wow. Well... Great question. Well, I was invited. They um, they they reached out to me, and they didn't have to. But I'm, I'm telling you, man, their machine is growing like like it's a phenomenon. Right, Angela, it's a phenomenon. It has man. to give you like a fresh type of energy too. I'm humbled by it, mad humble, but they didn't have to. Mm -hmm. Like I'm telling you, these kids are on fire by themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, like they've always shown me love. They've always called me, you know, they were coming Uncle Kirk and you know, you know, we're following in your footsteps with, but really they're killing my footsteps. And so um, Monday morning after the Super Bowl I got a call about, yo man, what do you think about you and uh Mav City doing this uh, tour together, like a co headlining tour. And we're on stage together the whole night. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's a co headlining tour and it's like we were at Prudential Center last week. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a seat available. And you've wow. been a Prudential. Yeah, absolutely. No, it looks lit just from the um, videos oh, that you guys have been posting. Yeah. So the album Kingdom Book One that you guys, the collaboration album, can you talk about the process of recording that together? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You know, Tony and JJ's vision, uh, Tony's mom was incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And so he, uh, as, as a young boy, he would have to go visit her 
in prison. And it, and what's crazy about it is that my sister has been in and out of prison all her life for drug addiction. So she was incarcerated the longest, like 15 years. My grandfather was in prison for murder. Mm. And so, uh, and then my sister's dad was in prison. So, and, and unfortunately they were all in prison at the same time wow. in the state of Texas. So. Is I come from that type of background as far as my personal, so I can identify. So what we did is we recorded the album in a prison in Miami, Florida, in the Everglades. So we recorded this album live in a prison, bro. And and you've got the men of this prison standing behind singers and standing next to singers. And and we went in earlier and they were teaching the they were teaching the prisoners the songs. So you got the prisoners singing along with sopranos and altos and tenors and dudes and just like this big harsh pot of just people needing hope. It's because, you know, you can be still on the outside but still be in prison. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so you've got people that are all looking for freedom. And, and, and the first single, one of the lines is, uh, we're singing freedom. You know, and our testimonials will be singing forever and ever always. And so, you know, man, we just want to show people what the kingdom looks like. Because, you know, you know, we also know that some people are victims of mass incarceration. Yes. Uh, and, and we also know that there are some men that have made mistakes. We just want to show people that if you've made mistakes or if you were looked over or if you were done wrong, that your story doesn't end behind bars. I saw you guys did a video to the, that song where it's actually in a prison. Yes, ma'am. And I, I think you said 1,300 inmates were providing the chorus Incredible. and the, the vocals. You know how amazing that is? When you watch the video, it is really, because it is such an issue in our community, mass incarceration, yes. Yes. and seeing something like that is really like, these are human beings, and a lot human of times beings. there's so much inhumane treatment when you're yes. incarcerated that yes. it's hard for people people don't have a lot of sympathy too yes they yes. think you're in jail you did something wrong you're a bad person yes and that is not really how it goes yes most yes. of the time yes as soon as my sister got out of prison just the lack of support if her brother was not kirk you know some of these things would have just gotten overlooked it's you know and, and can you imagine how many people get out and don't have the resources right um i remember when my sister got out the very first time uh, it was it was over 20 years ago, and and I got her a place to stay. I got her put in situations, but if I if she didn't have those resources, she she would have gotten lost. And so I think it's beautiful what Tony and JJ are doing. I think that this album is going to speak to people mm -hmm. that are either behind bars in their minds, or souls, or physically that uh, everybody makes up the king. All right, we got more with Kirk Franklin. When we come back, don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Kirk Franklin. Now, recently you said uh, at a show that you felt like our generation let down the younger generation. Mm. Why do you feel that way? Oh, man, I do. It's because I really do feel, especially when it comes to faith, is I believe that when it comes to faith, that we, we let religiosity lead the narrative of people's relationship with God, meaning that we set principles that were more cultural than they were biblocentric. You know, whether it's like, you know, makeup, or, you know, or how you dress or what you say, or you can't do this, you can't do that. Like we led with the narrative of what you can't do. Well, that's a horrible way to start a conversation. Right. That's a horrible way to build a, a relationship is that if I meet you, the first thing I do is I give you a list of what you can't do. But the narrative of the faith, especially the Christian faith, and, and that's why we say that Western Christianity and the teachings of Jesus Christ are not synonymous, mm -hmm. right? They are not the same. And so uh, if I give you a list of your freedoms and everything that is written with love ink, mm -hmm. then we have a better opportunity to, to kind of get a great start. Mm -hmm. But what we did is that we passed on to the next generation a list of what they can't do. Right. This is wrong, this is wrong. And that's, a, and that's a hell of a way to start a relationship. And so that is a great mistake that we've done with passing to the next generation the message and the love of Jesus. Yeah, no, you're right. I've heard stories of, of young girls who get pregnant, getting kicked out of their church because Yo, of that. Sit down. Yeah, and Saucy Santana, he was up here talking about his mom is a pastor. Mm. And, you know, when he came out, it was like, we got to pray this gay out of you type of situation. Mm. Mm. And, yeah, it's very unfortunate that we have not done life with people. Mm -hmm. But to do life with people is very intrusive. It's very invasive. You know, it's, it's because the real uh, uh, church is supposed to let you in and we're supposed to let you into our junk. It's like the problem, the reason why we keep people arm length away is that because if we let you in too close, you get to see that we don't have it together as much as we try to make sure that you got it together. Mm -hmm. Now you also had Kingdom Business, so it's so interesting that yeah, you talked about this. Did you like Kingdom Business? Did you, did you yes, see any of it? Yes, and I saw the first two episodes on BT Plus. Mm -hmm. And so what I like about that is 
everything you just kind of touched on here is kind of what Kingdom Business is about. And it's your first time also uh, in that role where you're produ- mm-hmm. you're pro- you produced it, I'm right? I'm an executive producer mm-hmm. along with Devon Franklin, Holly Davis Carter. Shout out to them. Shout out to BT. And if you could tell, they really put a bag behind it. Yeah, it looks like, good. Yo, I mean, I, just by who's in it and then bringing y'all on board, man, you got to put a bag behind man. it. Man, and it is a story of the church and the juxtaposition of who can come in, mm-hmm. who's allowed in, and who has to say so, who can and can't come in. Gotcha. Right, so can you see a stripper as a gospel singer? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And being yeah, accepted yeah. as a gospel singer? Because really, like, you can find God anywhere. You yeah, can find yeah, God yeah. in the strip club, and that's yeah. a great way to reach mm. that audience. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm going to the strip club right. to be trying to reach <laughs> But somebody. you're not yeah. going to say, if you want to be a gospel singer, you can't. Because well, it's I would say that if you want to be a gospel singer, see first of all, she asks really great <laughs> questions. Right. I, look and see, see this one know what she's doing. That's right. She been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I am saying that all of our faiths, uh, it is a journey, mm-hmm. right? It's almost like as a married man, can a married man go to a strip club and still have a healthy marriage? I would think that at some point, the love relationship of the wife should pull the man in another trajectory Mm -hmm. that she should not have to be on his back about it but see love should pull us what if there's good seafood in there because you know a lot of the strip clubs have amazing chefs it depends why you go to the strip club I know your wife loves seafood I saw her eating on your page and you love her this is hilarious because it's it's real what what I'm trying to say this is you know let me tell you about the breakfast club (laughs) they know what they're doing (laughs) if you come up in here you gotta be prepared that's right I would say the Red Lobster got good biscuits too, and so they do. yeah, yeah. So but the wings. yeah, if you want to look at biscuits, you can go to Red Lobster and look at them biscuits. But, but you know, your records play in the strip club. Yeah, but I'm not going to go. <laughs> but I'm not. This is you gotta hilarious. throw some money when your record comes. <laughs> oh, oh, some money when your record comes. Oh, I was gonna ask you like the record with I you and Lil Baby, you. right? The record with me and Lil Baby. Yeah. Record did great. Record did well. Wow. How many rappers after that reached out to you to do a record with you, if any? Well, no, I've had many just throughout the years. Just, mm-hmm. just, just, you know, you know, uh, yeah, uh, even after Ultralight Beam with Kanye, mm-hmm. you know, um, and 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 I think that for me, I try to be very careful. Like I just did a a record with DJ Mustard. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, he reached out to me for for me to do something, and I just did LMA's uh, record. It's I try to be very very methodical mm-hmm. in what I do. It's because I don't ever want to be the gospel go-to guy for rap albums is because I don't want, is I don't want my posture to be that my intent is to not be anything but to spread this message. Mm-hmm. And I don't want um, the, the gospel to ever look like it's a novelty and that it's a hook that I really would love to be able to do relationship with people. Mm-hmm. So I really try to do music with people that there is some type of history of either they know of my music, they've had an experience with my music, versus somebody who really may not know me but may have heard me on something that's, oh, you know, let's let's get my guy on this. Right. It, it's because I'm all about relationship. And so I would much rather build relationship with somebody than just to write a hook or an intro for their album. So how do you feel when, uh, uh, let's say, a rapper does a, a quote-unquote gospel album, right? And they do a gospel album, and you take it serious because this is this is your life. This is how you live. This is what you preach. It's what people, I believe. Yeah, what you yeah, believe. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. when you see a, a rapper do a gospel album, right? And then from the gospel album, they go back and then do a, a regular album. Does it seem like a novelty? Does it seem like it's done just to get accolades because they don't necessarily believe it? Because if they believed it, they would stay in it but they go left to right. So do you still, yeah, yeah. How, how do you feel about that yeah. when you see? Great question. It's I think that it must be done with a great sense of soberness. It's because, you know, it's, sometimes we think that the trajectory of growth is always linear. Mm-hmm. But it's not always linear, right? Sometimes growth is like this, right? Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you do this and you fall back and you do this, you fall to. It's, you know, one of the greatest examples that I uh, can uh, have is that, you know, I had a very close relationship with R. Kelly. Mm-hmm. Very close relationship. And, 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 and was not aware of the trauma that he was creating uh, in its linear form. Mm-hmm. You know, um, this was back in 94. Uh, this was right before I Believe I Can Fly. And I had a great relationship with Robert and led Robert to faith. I mean, I, I was 24 years old mm-hmm. and Robert was in love with this song I did called Why We Sing. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. and Robert would show up at my concerts, and you know, I mean, I mean he, he was still R. Kelly at the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was you know huge, and so right after our relationship is when he did I Believe I Can Fly, and then I did a, a song on one of his albums, I put a choir on it, and so we were building, we were really building relationships, and Robert got really exposed to some churches and some church people that kind of started being about this in his life, it kind of really pissed him off, it did him wrong, you know, and so mm. I just remember those moments, and so I remember you know, his life like this. I had no idea mm -hmm. that there were these other things going on. I had no idea which, which you know, um, 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 still prayers every day follow the victims. Um, it's because I do believe that there were victims. Right. Yes, you know, as I believe it. Mm -hmm. When you, know? you pray for the victims, you pray for R. Kelly also? I do. Mm -hmm. Is I pray for both. It's because that is the difficult job of making sure that I'm not trying to put myself in God's position. Is I'm not God, and mm -hmm. so I have to uh, humble myself, and even the things I don't understand, I've got to be able to pray for everyone. All right, we got more with Kirk Franklin when we come back. Let's get into a classic. This is Kirk Franklin with Stomp. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Going too far. That was Stomp, Kirk Franklin. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Kirk Franklin. Now, you, you mentioned your mixtape. Oh, my God. Why did I say something? You mentioned your mixtape. Now, okay, go ahead. when your mixtape came out, <laughs> oh you know, some people were... I I was be no, no, some some people, you know, <laughs> were, were were shocked, and some people weren't. Okay, if you think I'm ready to strip, I'm going to say it like this. When your f***ing hands start getting respected, you need to get your skinny mother ass back out the oh. goddamn way before I put my foot in your ass. Because I, I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. I did it. He just hung up the phone. Me myself, I I wasn't shocked. We know. And, and the reason I wasn't shocked is I, because <laughs> your kids will get you to that point. Especially your grown kids. Your grown kids. I. If, if if I had a mixtape with my son, my son is 18 years old, I got a mixtape too, right? Mm -hmm. But my son knows I love him, and he knows mm -hmm. the reason that I do it is because I want to protect him, and I care him, and I love him. It didn't come from a place of malice. It came from a place of love, in my opinion. You apologize for it. Mm -hmm. Why? The reason why I apologize is because I, I did not want to normalize things that uh, may be things that, that we expect as far as our culture. The things things that we may say, well, that's what my mama did to me, that's what my daddy did to me, is I don't want to normalize it. It's that I want to be able to acknowledge that there was a standard and I didn't meet the standard. That 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 that's the part of also being a man. It's also being a man of faith. It's acknowledging that or or to, to me just trying to be a good man is that there is a standard and I didn't meet it. And because I didn't meet it, I wanted people to know that I'm sorry for doing it. Now, a lot of people will say, we well, should apologize to your son. You don't know the history there. Mm -hmm. You don't know what all is happening. My son is 34 years old. My son uh, recently was in some trouble, and uh, um, I was there. One thing that bothered me is sometimes it was like, I felt like your son did something to try to hurt you. Yeah. Right? He tried to record that. He tried to embarrass yeah. you. He tried to hurt you. Yeah. How did that make you feel? And... What was the conversation like that? Because it's almost like if even if I get in an argument with, with my son, right? We might say some things to that to each other that, you know, after we laugh about, Dad, I love you. But I would never think my son would try to do something to bring my empire down or to hurt me or to embarrass me on a huge stage. That's that's what an enemy does. So how did that affect you? And, and how did y'all heal from that if y'all did? Um... And the reason I'm asking because there's a lot of parents out yeah. there that have, have yeah. the same similar situation. Yeah, yeah. We historically have tried to keep our journey with our son and his state a private family matter. Right. Mm -hmm. We we uh, is I love my son, mm -hmm. and we've been here for many 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 years, and I've done everything that I could to try to help him for many 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 years. My son is a very talented, beautiful soul, and and the way that he was wired mm -hmm. uh, is not necessarily his fault. Uh, some of us are born with very unique wiring, mm -hmm. and a lot of times in our community, it is hard for us to acknowledge 
certain wiring. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we, we, we want to think it's something else. Mm -hmm. uh, we see people outside of our communities, they're very quick to lean towards science and medicine and information, right? Mm -hmm. um, not our community, right? You know, we, 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 we historically, when it comes to systems, are very uh, 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 distrusting of systems. And so we have had to walk through many, many, many layers uh, historically with our son. Uh, my son recently was incarcerated, mm -hmm. right? And 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 so uh, we knew we we we've been watching it for years. I, I mean, this is my boy. Mm -hmm. I know my son, and I've uh, known everything. And so uh, right now, I am proud of him. Is because I think that he is. We are privately trying to trying to address some of those things. And I have to realize, envy that. He may never be able to understand mm. the gravity of what he did. The, does, does that make sense what I'm saying in context? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He may never be able to understand it. And for me, I may have to live with that and put his well-being before what he did. In a way, do you think this kind of broke down the doors for you to be able to address something like this publicly and then work on fixing things with your relationship and your approach? As a 34-year-old man, mm -hmm. uh, his willingness to accept the uniqueness of how God has wired him mm -hmm. and to embrace it and to embrace the, the tools that are available will be a very beautiful thing. It's because sometimes that will give you a greater opening of understanding what life is around you and it gives you context more than anything I'm grateful that he felt like that went in in his darkest hour that we pulled up and I was gonna say that was there any hesitation because you know a lot of people would be like I'd write my son off if he did that I'd write my daughter off when he did that but when your son got into trouble was there any hesitation be like should I go help or should I he wants me to stand back. He wants to embarrass me. I'll let him figure it out on his own. Was there mm. any hesitation? Great, great. Or you or your wife? Great question. At the end of the day, he's still my son. And when something like that happened, all bets were off. And we, me and his incredible mother, shout out to his mother. Mm -hmm. Shout out to his mother. Mm -hmm. Boy, if I tell you, Angela, that, that woman, she missed, that woman camped out in Los Angeles for weeks to make sure, because you know, the, mm -hmm. that's her only son. Right. Mm -hmm. She camped out, shout out to his mother. His mother is a hero. And I do want people to know that even though what happened with my son and I, and and once again, I acknowledge the mistake that I made, is because I know what I was, the reason why I was so disappointed in myself is because I know what I'm dealing with. He just, that day, that well, those two days, it's because they're recording, it's two separate recordings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he recorded me. So, and I hadn't talked to him in five years. Wow. I hadn't talked to my son in five years when he finally, when he, when he called me. But I do want people to know I love him. I want the world to hear it loud. I love my son. Thank y'all for asking that in such a, this is the first time I've talked about this. Yeah, is no, it? I know. It's a. Yeah, yeah. You thank y'all for being really, really really like kind and gracious well, you know, really really I, I really well thank really you for it. being open you always are down to answer and talk about anything I know yeah. it's difficult I can see so we appreciate you for even sharing like what you did today we, we, we definitely appreciate you thank you and shout out to my son as I love him and I believe he's going to be even greater than what he realizes he's an incredible 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 mind and and sometimes God gives us these unique special minds and, and when we embrace it we can become better absolutely well, Kirk Franklin, we appreciate you for joining us. The new album, Thank Maverick you. City Kingdom Book One, is out right now. Shout out to Maverick City. The bus, they, they had a hard time getting here. <laughs> Maverick City, they on fire. Youngins, we on tour right now. Come see us. Let's go. And shout to you and your wife, too, when I called you out because I, I wanted to meet you for my book. You Yo, man, I'm honored, in, man. In minute, so thank you. Thank you. And shout your out wife. to your appreciate wife, too. It. Thank yeah. you so much. Do I need to be looking for, you know, <laughs> hey, you know, you you want you want, want, a, want a good godly man that'll <laughs> cook for you and make sure that your bath water's rubbed and ready for you to get home? What, what, what you want me to do? Oh, no, I'm good. Actually, my man does all of that. He Come does, on. He Come definitely on. cooks more than yeah. I do. And Come on. Come well, on. You good, Definitely ran the bath and all that. We got to leave with a prayer. Oh, man. Super dope, man. Well, 
Uh, man, Father, thank you for the opportunity to just come be around beautiful souls. I pray that you continue to open up more doors for them to be lights and so much darkness in the world. Thank you for the three of them. And uh, Father, I pray for people that are listening to me right now that have made mistakes. I want them to know that there's no condemnation, that the guilt that they live in is not from God. The guilt they live in is not from God because that guilt does not allow you to rise above the mistake and learn from it and be better. I want you to know that there's no mistake that you can ever make that God's heart and his arms are not open to you because he's the God of grace, love and mercy and it never runs out. And Father, help us to continue to know that the same grace that you give us, we need to give to each other. That it's so easy for us to write people off, but you never wrote us off. As a matter of fact, before we have even born, you sent your son to die for us before we even made one mistake. So there's not one mistake that we could ever do that you won't forgive. That's how dope and incredible your love is. I pray for families. I continue to pray for my family. And Father, lift up my son right now. Let him know that he's loved by you. Let him know that he's loved and that there's nothing impossible with you. And that your love for him is only, only, only the touch of what he can and shall be. And Father, help me to be in every way the best father that I can be so that we may honor you because none of this stuff matters if I can't win at home. And we give you all the glory in your name, Christ. Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, it's Kirk Franklin. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. I'm outside, so they don't run now. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Shout to uh, N-O-R-E. He's up listening right now. What up, Nori? N-O-R-E. What's up, my brother? All right. That's well, my guy, man. It's Luke mm-hmm. Absolutely. Let's get to the rumors. Let's go. It's time, time, time. She's spilling the tea. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, new Beyonce. Beyonce has announced the release date for her new 16-song project, and it's called Renaissance. It's coming out July 29th. On title, they posted Beyonce, Renaissance, July 29th, Act 1. So get ready for that. Everybody was talking about new music coming out because she had removed her profile photos across all her social media platforms last week. Mm -hmm. And then they said there was the Easter egg when the uh, Be Good Foundation Twitter account shared a collage of album covers to celebrate Black History Month and so this would be her seventh studio album. I so. think I, I, I got a feeling she dropping two because she put B7 and B8. Mm-hmm. So I feel like she's dropping two but very interesting. I am interested to hear what a 40, 40 year old mother of three married for over a decade Beyonce has to say. And I like the fact that there's a traditional role out this time. I'm ready. Now mm-hmm. according to reports and on the Jasmine brand they said that Beyonce's new album is ready but this era will be like no other. She wrote most of the songs during the pandemic when she was desperate to be with her fans and perform. This new record and campaign will be her most interactive one yet because she wants to reach out to the fans. It will focus on live experiences outside of touring including intimate shows and pop up performances. That's dope. She's planning to spend a lot of time performing and promoting it in the UK so there will be unique surprises in store for the British fans. People in her camp have scouted out venues for her to perform at when the music comes out and then there will be another huge tour later on. I wonder why the UK. Why not here first? Just curious. Mm. Mm, I don't have no idea. Mm. I don't question Beyonce, sir. Her neither should you. There's always a plan. We don't know what it is yet. I'm just curious. And I wonder if she'll do any interviews. At Mm -hmm. least one, right? Maybe let Blue Ivy interview her. Something on title. Yeah, it's definitely going to be like Blue Ivy. Let Blue Ivy interview Beyonce. Something like that. Absolutely. Okay, now Megan Thee Stallion, in the meantime, speaking of interviews, is on the cover of Rolling Stone. She posted the cover and said, I will never break it. I'm damn sure I'm never backing down. God's favorite, a.k.a. The It Girl, a.k.a. The Hot Girl Coach, a.k.a. The MFH Town Hottie, for the cover of Rolling Stone. Now, in that story, she told the writer... Uh, Man Kapara Conte that she's been portrayed as the villain in this case she said I want him to go to jail as far as Tory Lanez I want him to go under the jail and she also said that she feels like people aren't taking her experience seriously she said in some kind of way I became the villain and I don't know if people don't take it seriously because I seem strong I wonder if it's because of the way I look and she's just trying to figure out is it because I'm not light enough is it that I'm not white enough am I not the shape the height because I'm not petite do I not seem like I'm worth being treated like a woman Now, Tory Lanez has continued to refute Megan Thee Stallion's claim. She said, I feel like you've already tried to break me enough. You've already shot me. So why are you dragging it out like this? Like, what else? Have you hated me this much the whole time and I didn't see it? 
And she said some of the raw emotions she's been feeling over these last few years will be reflected in her upcoming album, which she hopes comes out this summer. She said, I want to take you through so many different emotions. Damn. At first she was twerking, now you might be crying. I really wish, I can't wait for this court case to be over for her. I feel bad for her because every time she does an interview, she has to relive. They ask the questions and it just, it makes the, you know, the public go against her. Some supporters, some go against her and obviously it's affecting her mentally. Well, other things she talks about in this Rolling Stone piece is her relationship with Partisan Fontaine, clearly mm -hmm. a bright spot, and her last conversations with her mother. Partisan Fontaine, you need to marry Megan Thee Stallion already, okay? <laughs> I tell you this all the time. <laughs> marry Megan Thee Stallion, start going to therapy, uh, submit your will to God, and just watch how things change in your life. All right, well, last week, uh, you know, Tory Lanez, the, I mean, his lawyer was in court and they feel like they have issues with Megan Thee Stallion speaking about the case. And, you know, they've accused him of leaking documents and uh, and things like that. So in the and in other news, Kelsey Nicole, who was Megan Thee Stallion's best friend, who was there that night, has responded to Meg's cover feature with Rolling Stone. She actually posted this on her Instagram. If y'all not catching on to the social media games by now, then I don't know what to tell y'all. But you guys have to pay attention. Like, I knew this was going to happen. This is just the beginning, y'all. I know y'all want me to talk, but this is just the beginning. So, like, when it's my turn, just know. I'm going to break everything down, okay? And we're going to see who really looked bad in the end. Does All that right. mean she's taking a stand in the case? I she would almost have to, to, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. she has to. And by the way, uh, Kelsey just had a baby, so she's a new mom. And in the article, Megan said, I'm like, Kelsey, as my best friend, why would you meet up with the person you saw shoot your best friend? And she said, Megan, y'all wasn't answering my calls. My back was against the wall. I didn't know what to do. What the F do you mean your back is against the wall? You're the only person in this situation that would clear this up for me. So that's what Kelsey was responding to when she posted that video. I'm really in interested to see if the court of law can beat the court of public opinion nowadays because I really don't mm -hmm. know anymore. I, I don't, I don't, so. I don't even know if it's worth discussing whatever your case is in the court of public opinion. I would rather just everything play out in court. Because well, in Amber Heard's interview that she just did, she was saying that she feels like part of the reason why she couldn't win was because of all the activity on social media and public opinion. The, the, only, I, the only reason I think that was a little different is because people were reacting to the things she was actually saying in court. Mm -hmm. It's not like they didn't, like this This one is different because everybody's already come to their own conclusions and they haven't even taken a, the, stand, the stand or anything right. yet. Amber Heard, people were just reacting to what, what they were seeing coming from the actual case. I thought yeah, I think that was a wild, yeah, that, that was a wild case. All right, well that is your rumor reports. That was a wild case, all right. Well, Charlemagne. Yes. Who you giving that down to? Let's talk people getting microchips put in places that they probably don't want them. What do they? What do they think people are listening to? What do they think people are hearing? We'll discuss it for after the hour. Oh my goodness! All right, we'll get to that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Angela Yee here. The General Insurance is a quality insurance company that's been saving people money for nearly 60 years. Switch to The General and you could save over $500. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. I was born a donkey. It's the donkey of the day. Donkey, donkey, donkey. That's pretty fun. Charlemagne the devil? Possibly. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. Yes, donkey of the day for Thursday, June 16th goes to a woman named Kania Aparecida. I probably didn't pronounce that right, but she's from Brazil. Uh, and Donkey of the Day is going to her husband. Her husband is not named in this story. Why, I don't know, because he's just as fool up as she is. Now, let me tell you this story. Uh, this young lady is 27 years old. And in 2019, she had two wisdom teeth removed. And she said ever since she had uh, her wisdom teeth removed, that everything that is said in her family's house, people in the street find out. I repeat, 27-year-old Kania Aparishita of Brazil had two wisdom teeth removed. And she said ever since she had them removed, that everything that is said in the family's home, people on the street find out. What the hell are you talking about, Uncle Charlotte? Let me explain. See, Kania is accusing a dentist 
of implanting a microchip in her mouth that allows him and his staff to listen to her family's conversations. I repeat, Kania Aparashida of Brazil claims that a dentist secretly implanted a microchip in her mouth three years ago to listen to her family's conversations. I am not making this up. Okay, I don't have that kind of imagination. Besides, there is not a writer alive who could create these kind of scenarios. What's the point of satire when the real world is this absurd? Kania told news outlet G1 in Brazil that I had two wisdom teeth extracted and without my authorization, they implanted a microchip in my mouth and listened to my conversations. But my husband saw that it was in my mouth and the dentist doesn't want to take it out. Kania and her husband have somehow convinced themselves that this dentist implanted a microchip in her mouth and everything that is said in the family's home, people on the street find out. In fact, they believe that the microchip that was implanted in their mouth makes it possible to hear all their WhatsApp conversations. I have no idea what all of this means. Okay, I don't know what's going on in the world anymore, man. It's one thing when it's one person. When it's one person that's believing this, you can say, okay, this might be, you know, a case of paranoid schizophrenia, but how does a wife and husband end up believing this together? Okay, I'm not the highest grade of weed in the dispensary, but I don't believe paranoid schizophrenia is contagious. Now, Kania and her husband didn't just believe this. They believed it so much that they went to the dentist on Wednesday, okay, with their three children and demanded that the dentist remove the alleged chip. Okay, if y'all don't believe me, go online and look up the video. The video footage shows her husband breaking three computer screens and a TV while both of them grabbed items from these dentist desks and started attacking the workers. Okay, they tore this place up. In the video, the husband runs and karate kicks the wall and then falls and gets mad at the wall. So he decided to then take that anger and frustration out on the TV screen. Her husband released a statement and this is the statement. We act according to emotions. See right there, you already lost me. Okay, what does your Uncle Charlotte always tell y'all? Don't allow your emotions to overpower your intelligence. I don't know what YouTube videos y'all been watching or how many times you've read Behold a Pale Horse. Great book, by the way. I recommend you read it. But something triggered y'all to have these thoughts, and I truly don't know why. But let me finish his statement. We act according to emotions. We just need to take the chip out from her. We've asked several times, and the dentist doesn't take it out. We tried to talk yesterday, and they didn't want to hear us. Office workers told authorities that Kania threatened them all right. Well, her husband threatened them and showed them image of a gun he had on his cell phone. <laughs> what? Okay. By the way, that alone is donkey of the day worth. Imagine someone threatening you by showing you a picture of a gun on their cell phone. Don't make me go to my car and get this. <laughs> okay. Is this what the world has come to? Are we so detached from reality because of our smart devices that we think having pictures of our pistols on our phones is the same as actually having our pistols on us? Please, let's not set this precedent. All right, some police officers have already killed unarmed men because they mistook their cell phone for a gun. So imagine he had a picture of a gun on his phone. Imagine a cop saying that. He had a picture of a gun on his phone. I had to shoot him. I felt threatened. Like society, where are we going? Listen, man, I am baffled by this story. Okay, this is Florida levels of crazy. Matter of fact, Florida, I'm not even going to do y'all like that. I've never heard anything like this in my life. But I have one question for people who think things like a dentist would put a microchip in your mouth. Why you? How come you don't ever hear people of importance saying things like this? Of all the people whose mouth we would want to tap, okay? I feel like I need to pause that. All the people who actually probably have world secrets, all these people who are plotting and planning the new world order. Just why you, Kania? What, what is being said in your house? that a dentist would go out of his way to bug your molars. Who called that, okay? I just wanna know, help me understand. And why would you put a microchip in your mouth and make it to where everyone out in the street can hear y'all? Like why would regular everyday people in Brazil care about what is coming out of the Aparashita household? I'm all for people thinking highly, highly of themselves, but this is just, this is, this is just why Donkey of the Day was invented in the first place. Please give Kania Aparashita and her husband the biggest hee haw. <coughs> this world is going mad, okay? Brothers and sisters, people, please, man, go to therapy. Find a sacred purpose coach, a spiritual leader, drink some water. Please disconnect from social media. Just please, please, please start taking care of your mental, emotional, and spiritual well being because I don't know what this earth is coming to. All right. 
All right. Well, thank you for that donkey today. Mm -hmm. Now, when we come back, we usually do Ask Ye, but instead, we have a special guest joining us. Who we got? Yes, Jessica Nabango. Now, I love this woman because she is the first black woman to have traveled to every country in the world. A hundred, what is it, 159? 195 countries. 195, sorry. Mm -hmm. 195 countries, which is a huge deal. And she has a book that she did with National Geographic documenting the experience. So she's going to talk about how she made it happen and also give you some anecdotes from different places that she went to so for anybody who's interested in traveling uh, this is a great great interview to listen to and she has a book out right now the catch me if you can all right we'll get into that next it's the breakfast club good morning the breakfast club Dang. morning everybody it's dj nv angela Yee, charlamagne the guy we are the breakfast club usually we do ask Yee here but today we got a special guest joining us her name is Jessica Nabongo. She's an author. She has a book called Catch Me, The Catch Me If You Can. She's a woman who's traveled to every country in the world, all 195 countries. Welcome. Thank you. Detroit's own Jessica yes, Nabongo. Yes, Detroit's own. The traveler out there. So <laughs> tell us about this book. What is this book about? Yes. So this book is published by National Geographic. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm the first black woman to visit every single country in the world. Nice. 195. 195. Okay. And so this book, um, it goes over 100 countries. So I wrote 100 stories from 100 countries, and there's over 300 images, which I think is really important, especially for National Geographic, because to see a free black woman frolicking around the world, I think that's really important, especially coming out of that historic brand, and that's what this book is doing. So. Now, the first thing that Envy said to me when I was like, oh my God, this story is amazing. She went to every country in the world, was, well, she must have had a lot of money to be able to do that. <laughs> I that's know that's expensive. the first thing that people think. I mean, you ain't got for six sure. kids like me traveling with you, but it's still expensive. <laughs> I do not have any. Um, yeah, no, for sure. And I like I found little tips and tricks along the way. Firstly, I was running my own travel agency at the time. So that, you know, I had income. I was just Jet working Black. remotely. Jet Black, yes. So Shout you know when out. the flights are cheap. Uh, yes. you know what you could, okay, all right. Yes. And then I use credit cards with travel rewards for like everyday purchases. So every single day I'm earning points. So then I had tons of free flights I'm a that fan way. Of that. Yeah. I got my Delta Amex card. Yes. I got my Amex Platinum card. I get to yes. go in the Sky Clubs and other Priority yes. Pass lounges for free. I, I love the one at JFK, the yeah. Amex lounge at JFK. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Centurion Lounge. Now, another thing that you said is to chase the deal, not the destination. That's one of your tips for people also. So explain that. Yeah. So there's websites I use like flightdeal.com, secretflying.com. And so every day they send emails out and it'll be like, New York to Bolivia, $300 or whatever. <laughs> so if you just want to travel, you can just, you know, you get that email and instead of saying like, oh, I want to go to Puerto Rico or I want to go to France, just let that email drive where you go so you can just get a $300 flight to anywhere so in the world. So you don't care about seats. If you're sitting by the toilet, they... Oh, no, go... I, that's not my life. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Because that's what those flights sound like. Slow down. No, no, no. To, no. to Australia, no. yeah, you're in the middle row, <laughs> next to the toilet. You got to put one leg behind your back. You got to put your arm up the whole time. Like, that's what it sounds like. But look, me. here's the thing. If you if you have loyalty to an airline, even when you buy those cheap flights, you get free upgrades, at mm -hmm. least to, like, economy comfort Delta or comfort, you right. know you know you can just splurge a little bit and mm -hmm. do delta one so what's the, what's the your, your favorite place that you've been and why oh goodness that's so hard people ask me that it's like you got six kids it's mm -hmm. like can do you i don't want to ask if you have a favorite child I don't, but i don't i don't, I don't. They, <laughs> they don't say that but 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 i don't okay um but yeah it's really hard like there's so many places i love i've been to 50 countries more than once but like some of my favorites are cuba iran japan senegal kenya those are some of my some now of my it's favorites. interesting because in the book you also talk about sometimes we're socialized to think that certain places are dangerous to go to or that you shouldn't want to go there so can mm -hmm. you talk about those experiences because even on your list of favorite places mm -hmm. those might be some places that people would be scared to go as a woman also traveling alone yeah. sometimes because mm -hmm. you just said Iran I don't know if, if they call me and say hey Envy would you do a show on Iran I'd be like I don't know it made me kind of nervous but it's so it's, it's amazing yeah so like to that point like I there's no country in the world that's completely safe there is no country in the world that's completely unsafe and quite frankly as a black woman most of the worst things that have happened to me have happened in the u.s like hands down i I've would done, say that too yeah you know what i mean like me. miami cops pulled a gun on me that has never happened to me anywhere else um i've been to 89 countries solo in the middle east and africa you know all these scary places and i think at the end of the day the thing that i learned from this is 
most people are good. Like my journey was made beautiful by the kindness of strangers in right. all these countries. And so in picking the 100 countries that are in the book, I included places like South Sudan, Somalia, Yemen, so that not only can I show beautiful images from those countries, but also to sort of demystify these places and like show the humanity there that we never get to see on the news. Mm -hmm. And you also said not every acknowledgement of your race is racism. That's something you say too. So sometimes you might, might go places and people are curious. What's the, the difference, right? Yeah. Where you went in feeling like this is racist or feeling like this is just curiosity or amazement. Yeah, I feel like, so Malcolm X has a quote which is in the book and it, he says something, I'm paraphrasing. He says, um, American propaganda is such that they convince us no matter how bad we catch it here, it's going to be worse anywhere else. So I feel like a lot of black people who travel abroad, we go with that energy of like, oh, like we have our guard up. We're, we're thinking somebody's going to be racist just because, you know, our experience in the country, in the U.S. But Every time someone acknowledges your race, it's not racism. A lot of times it's curiosity. You know, you'll go to a lot of Asian countries and they'll want to take pictures with you. They may assume you're a celebrity or like a basketball player or whatever. And it's just because you got to think African-American culture is the most exported culture in the world. Mm -hmm. Think about the music. Think about te television. Think about athletics. There is no other culture that ex like goes across the globe at the same rate in mm -hmm. the same depth. So, yeah, a lot of people in the world are very excited to meet black people because they're a lot of them just don't have black people in their country. Correct. And it's because these are their idols. You know what I mean? There's little kids in Kyrgyzstan who like idolize Beyonce or Rihanna or whoever. And so, yeah, they're going to be really excited when they meet you. But it's not, you know, it's not voyeurism or anything. It's just because of the culture and how it's been exported around the world. Now, you were teaching in Japan. I was. How was that? It was amazing. I got it was it was funny because oh so. that's my only word. I go there, I go there all the time. Something they taught me. Arigato, okay. Arigato gozaimasu. Um, so I actually cut my what you hair. Say back? I don't know what you said back. I only know arigato. What, what did you say back? Uh, arigato gozaimasu. That's just like a more formal way of saying thank you. Okay. It's like thank you very much, kind that's, of. That's all they, he said he said hello. No, no, I know I said thank you. That's all they taught me. I, I used to I used to do a lot of shows there. And that's, I, I, I miss I miss Japan a lot. I'm like, is it it's open fun. yet? Um, it was great. So my hair, I cut my hair in 2008 when I moved there because like I had a pixie cut and I don't know how to do my own hair. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm gonna just shave it off so I can, you know, do my thing. And so when I first got there, I felt like I was in a zoo because the kids and the parents were just like, what is happening? What is this thing in front of us? You know, mm -hmm. but after like a month, I would say it was great. And honestly, it was one of the best places I lived. Like Japanese culture is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um best customer service in the world and you don't have to tip nobody they just do their job and do it well i love it, it that short, tipping though. thing is interesting because um you know some cultures don't tip and I, I was at a restaurant here and these women were sitting behind me i think they were from like i think they said either i think they said switzerland mm -hmm. and maybe they don't tip there mm -hmm. and so they were asking me like you know they were angry at us at the other place like what is this what are we supposed to do because they didn't know about tipping yeah, because in other countries, they pay people a living wage and the customer isn't responsible for, you know, like adding mm -hmm. on the tip. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., we've just gotten used to it. And it's like creeped up because now it's like 20 percent. They'll put 25 percent on there. Right. And I'm like, but wait, what are the like, options? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but that's a it's a it's a very American thing, like tipping culture. All right. We have more with Jessica Nabongo. When we come back, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. And Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Jessica Nabongo. Yee. So you think that teaching in Japan was kind of like the catalyst for you deciding that you wanted to go on this journey? So um, I, I grew up traveling. So my parents are from Uganda, and we traveled a lot when I was little. By the time I graduated high school, I'd been to like eight countries. Mm -hmm. But living in Japan definitely opened the world up. It was the first time I lived abroad. And after that, I was like, I want to live abroad for three more years. I ended up staying abroad for seven years. Mm -hmm. I went to, um, I did my master's in London. I lived in Italy, and I lived in West Africa. Um, so those were amazing experiences. And so in 2009, between Japan and London, I started my blog, The Catch Me If You Can, which is where the name of the book comes from. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, because my friends always call me Carmen San Diego. And so, <laughs> <Where is she? laughs> yeah, ex I know. I'm like, can we do a reboot? <laughs> you know, I've been following your journey. I've always been so jealous. Like, I want to be able to just be like, all right, I'm out. I can't even take a week off from work without them <laughs> getting on my back about where are you? Where have you been? <laughs> 
Just take a mic with you. No, I go. That, that's what I do. I, I go. I go everywhere. My we wife, know Envy. You my do. My wife, she finds these the weird places I've never heard about, and she I books these that. trips, and we just we just go. I was gonna ask. You know, is it difficult when you travel to these places, the fact that you don't speak the native language and getting around and traveling, is that always difficult and hard for you? No, because you know what I always do? If I go somewhere and I really, like, I speak French and some, like, Spanish and Portuguese and Italian. So that helps with a lot of the world. Um, But in places that I don't, I look for someone who's, like, between 12 and 15 because those kids are learning English in school. Got you. So that's that's the trick. You know, like find a younger child, like walking down the street and be like, excuse me, can you help me? And they usually, that has always worked for me in 100% of the cases. So that's a little. And now they have tip. all these apps where you could like yeah. talk into it. Those apps suck, man. I see that on, nine, I see it on 90 Day Fiance. That's how I know. <laughs> <laughs> My kids used to do that better than me. They'd be like, they'd be like, dad, say this. And then we got to talk to them. We got to show them. And they go back. Those apps suck. I was going to ask, if you had to say five places that you would say people have to go if there was only five places that you say you have to choose what would be the five places okay you are really killing me right now okay egypt i think just because i gotta go to egypt you haven't been yet okay we will talk we'll talk before a party day yet but (laughs) we'll talk talk. i'm just um (laughs) egypt for sure Mm -hmm. you know it's just one of those places you learn about from when you're a child and like it's as magical in person as it is Mm -hmm. um as a child this is so hard. Japan. Love Japan. I just love the Good culture. Um, Kansai. So the Kansai region is like Kyoto, Osaka, and Kobe. Osaka so, and Kobe. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I prefer that to Tokyo. And they love the music. They love the culture. Oh, yeah. They for love sure. the culture. For sure. Mm-hmm. 100%. And their fashion is on point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. Senegal is my current obsession. It's so close to here. From here in Delta, it's like a seven-hour flight. That's it? It's amazing. You can go for three days. Yeah, it's amazing. Really? Um, great beaches and it's like it's very African because it's Africa but it has a calmness about it which I think comes from Islam so I love that so Sudan is the country in the world that has the most pyramids and the oldest Mm. but nobody goes there when we went to see those pyramids we were the only ones there the, and there was like, there's no ticket booth. There is nothing. Just pull up. You just walk. just pull yeah. up. So like when you go to Giza, it's tons of people. But when you go to Sudan, it's like there's nobody there. And it's it's such an amazing experience. Cuba. Cuba. I'm obsessed with Cuba. Really? Yeah. Imagine that. And at first you didn't even want to go there. Yeah, I know. I'm obsessed with Cuba. I, like, I want to go to Cuba that. too. I, I, I see the car culture just looks like everything just reminds me of old. I want to go back. Yeah, and it's yet. because of the embargo. So it's like, it's not that they have those cars because they really love them. They have no other <laughs> option. Yeah, no. So like they've learned how to maintain them and, you know, do everything they need to do. Amazing. Like the people, the food. I'm going to ask a stupid question. Rum. Are we allowed in Cuba now? I know one time we couldn't go. We had to go around to get to Cuba and then come back around. Are we? So the rules have recently loosened up a little bit because Trump tightened them when he was leaving. And so now Biden just loosened it up a little bit. You guys are journalists. Mm-hmm. So you can go to Cuba as journalists. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, get on down there. Um, okay. We can be journalists for the sake of a trip to Cuba. Right, exactly. I don't like, know play I don't know play that game. And then I'm stuck in Cuba. And then I'm like, well, you know, Jessica said that we were journalists. <laughs> um, okay, last, last one. one. I'm going to say Mexico. Okay. What part? You know, I, I love Mexico City. Um, they have wine country, like um, Jalisco, which is where tequila is from. I think people, you know, always just go to like Tulum, which... Okay. Everyone was just okay. In Every, the everyone was right. I everyone was like, in New okay. York was in Tulum and LA was in Cabo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you go outside of that, Mexican culture is it's so rich. Like, you know, we take tequila for granted. <laughs> um, there's mezcal, yes, but also just the mezcal. food. It's mm-hmm. you know, it's such a huge diverse country. So I would like encourage people just to, to get away from Cancun and Cabo and just see what else the country has to offer. Well, I really enjoy first of all, looking at the pictures. You know, Absolutely. I told you I've been following you. Oh, I know. And, on Instagram. Yeah. We've been talking about doing this, so I'm glad that you made it up here, but this Thank is just you. beautiful and amazing. Now you done went to every single country. Now what? Well, there's a TV show in development, hey. so that'll be exciting. Hey. Um, and yeah, you know, honestly, I'm so excited for this book to be out in the world and just to see how people react to it. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, it's a feel-good book. We need that right now. Um, the world we're living in is so scary and so weird and so divided. And so I hope that people pick up this book and they laugh and they smile and, and really think differently about the world. Well, thank you for joining us and yeah, congratulations and Continue to travel the world. Thank you. you guys, get you this book, so open a page, people. and just go to the place that the page opens to. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's, that's a new challenge. <laughs> All right. And when are we going to Mystique? 
Um, May 2024. You see how I invited myself? Mm-hmm. Said, May 2024. Going? It's going to be a movie. Sam, you, you going to, right? <laughs> oh, going? yeah. Show me that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. It's Jessica Nabongo. Her book, The Catch Me If You Can, is out right now. Pick it up. And it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. I'm not making this up. I wish you guys could hear the conversations we hear behind the scenes. No, because I was. I, it was something I was watching recently, and Meffy Man was playing a doctor, and he and he was telling the dude he had to do his own prostate exam. I can't remember what it was though. It was funny as hell. That sounds like a dream. Oh, it was Michael Chase show. I'm bugging. What dream? That damn Shay. Yeah, it was Michael Chase show. Yeah, he had Meffy Man playing a doctor, and he uh, <laughs> Meffy Man was telling the dude he had to do his own prostate exam. And when the dude was asking Meff to do it, he was he Meff spazzed on him like, "You kinky!" He's uh, acting like you. He wasn't here when he found out you can't use that word. What, what word? <clears throat> that Lizzo had to take oh, out. Oh, was spazzed? Spazzed, yeah. man, please. <laughs> I said the same thing. I'm not. I mean, come on. <laughs> been saying that kid. What's that, what, you spazzed? I don't even know who I'm offending by saying that. I don't even know what that means. People I ain't UK. saying it. You said what? I think people in the UK. It's people who have uh, in the UK. Cerebral <laughs> yes. palsy. Cerebral palsy. They said that's an uh, ableist term. Man, I, thought, I don't even know what that is. What is ableist? <laughs> you know what cerebral palsy is. is, though. I do. So in the UK, that's offensive you said to people. Palsy. What do you say? Cerebral palsy. Oh, cerebral. Mm-hmm. It's, right. it's cerebral palsy, right? Mm-hmm. He says cerebral. No, I didn't. Oh, I thought he said cerebral, said cerebral palsy. So that means you can't do the Harlem Shake no more, then. Harlem Shake is offensive to people. Very now. offensive. That's basically that's, that's essentially what y'all saying. The Harlem no, Shake is offensive. No, it's not what we're saying. So, so it, clearly, if the word "spaz" is offensive, then I know the Harlem Shake is offensive. You better not do that. See, look Harlem at Taylor. Shake. She don't care. She's just doing it. You gonna get canceled? I'm wow. Gonna you. I'm wow. Canceled. You just offended me. Wow. All right, but let's get to rumors. Listen up. It's just in. All the gossip. Gossip. The rumor report. Gossip. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. Well, Janet Jackson is on the cover of Essence. Looking amazing. I don't know if you guys saw the pictures inside the magazine. But um, she sat down and chatted with them for her cover feature. And she does say that she does have music coming. She has taken a break. She said, even though it's something that I absolutely love, it still is my work, my job. There will be music at some point. Exactly when? I can't say just yet, but there will be. I love it too much not to do it. This is all I know. There's so much I want to do. But my number one job is being a mama. And she also said, though, she's been famous for most of her life. Notoriety isn't something that she craves. She claims that her awards, like her Grammys, aren't even displayed in her home. She said, that's not important to me, whether I did or didn't win, to be quite honest. It's really the body of music touching people and how it impacts their lives that matters to me. It's not the accolades. I honestly don't think about that stuff. I mean, it's a great position to be in because Janet Jackson does never, she never has to record another song in her life if she don't want to. Mm -hmm. But she loves it. That's what I'm saying. I can listen. Janet can do that's the way love goes for the rest of her life and I'll be perfectly okay. And those videos, Pleasant Principle, I think, is one of the best videos of all time. That's right. Rhythm Nation going to always be a Halloween costume every mm-hmm. year for what's, somebody. What's the one with Heavy D? What with Heavy D? The um, video with Heavy D. She do Heavy D. I know what you're talking about. I, and I have that song on my remember. gym it's really, playlist. Really, it's a dope video. Jamie <laughs> and Heavy D. You know what song that is. Man, I can't. It's, it's I, not All Right With You, right? All, all right. right. Yeah, I think it is. Is it? No. The Google's right in front of y'all. Yeah, Google it while I'm doing my job over here. It's like a muff. All right, now, um, Post Malone says that he writes most of his lyrics while on the toilet. He was on the Howard Stern Show. Here's what he said. No, it literally comes to me because I write all my songs on the can. What <laughs> songs have you written while I'd say about 30% of all my albums have been written on the show. 60% of lyrics have been written on the And when you say written Are, on Hey, the Howard, how how long... What's your what's your average shit? Literally, I shit, and I'm off of there in two minutes. I've learned my lesson. You're going to get roids, and you're going to get all kinds... Of, but if you're writing hit songs on the can, then just sit there. I'm like hour and a half, two hours. But you're not that whole time, but you're sitting there. Are you mm. pushing the whole time? Because you really could get hemorrhoids, and I'm not making a joke. Uh, it's my special zone. I want to know how nice his bathroom is that he can spend two hours in. There. I'm sure it's really nice. It has to be, right? Yeah. Well, he's, not, he's not pushing for two hours. He's just sitting there, chilling. You, know? you push him for two hours, you're having a baby, Post Malone. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't even feel like I have time to have two hours to be on the toilet. I Nobody don't... does. Something's wrong if you're pooping for two hours. You well, I no guess friends. he's not pooping. He's just writing rhymes. So he probably gets there, gets in his zone. He's do you sitting flush? On the toilet, or do you just let the doodle sit in there for two hours? I wonder if he's butt naked or if he just only has his pants down. Got to be butt naked. It has to be Because your clothes naked. don't smell like poo if you're sitting there for two hours and just let it simmer. It's like marinating in I pee. wouldn't have two hours in there. My kids would be knocking on the door. My wife would Where be knocking born? on the door. Who got two hours and just be sitting hours? on the toilet? 
He must be amazing well, to be Well, he just white. had a baby, so maybe now he can't. Enjoy. Clearly he had a baby. He's been yeah. pushing for two hours. Oh, you pushing for two hours. You need to have a baby. All, All right, Nas is going to be co-directing Showtime's upcoming Supreme Team documentary with a behind-the-scenes look at the 80s Queens hustlers. So the Supreme Team story is going to be told through the eyes of the leaders, Kenneth Supreme McGriff and his nep- nephew, Gerald Prince Miller. Irv ain't doing it? Yeah, I thought Irv was doing it. He's that. in it, mm. but he's and he's interviewed in it. I actually have learned a lot about this. Um, I thought Irv would have been. Well, I think Irv's doing the movie. Yeah, this is this is a documentary. Mm-hmm. The movie oh. is different. This okay. documentary is actually being told by Supreme and his nephew. So here is the trailer. Supreme Team was one of the most notorious conglomerates in the country. Supreme was the boss. Prince would be the underboss. These guys were juggernauts, bigger than life. They lived by a code. Get cars. Get money. Get rich. Jamaica Queens. I was selling 10 to 15 keys a week. We were branching out all over to Long Island. Crack was the engine that transformed the city. If Einstein grew up in the projects, he would have been selling drugs. You don't want to fight a war forever. The longer you stay in that war, the greater the chance that you get killed. Good. They were part of the reason why I'm into cars like I'm into cars. I would see them all the time on Jamaica Avenue driving up and down Queens and everything from BMWs to Mercedes to Ferraris to... I thought Clue Bentley's. was the reason you got into cars and DJing. No, Clue was the reason you I got into... You switching up your DJing. origin story. No, Clue, was yeah. one, Clue was the reason I got into DJing. And Supreme is still in jail, so Supreme I know he was doing interviews from, from there. Supreme you team. said that Clue pulled up in like some fly car looking cute, and nice you was car. like, yo, ever since then, you was like, where'd you get that car? I did not And say he that. said to you, DJing. Because you said everybody that you knew that had a nice car was a drug dealer. That's your, that was your origin story when you was with Marvel. Now you with DC, no. you switching it up. You see, see, it, it didn't happen like that. It's like, I didn't ever say Clue's cute. You don't cute. remember that, Yee? No, I never said Clue's cute. I said Clue pulled up in a car and I asked So you're saying Clue's not cute? Oh, my goodness. Why do y'all do this to me? Why do you do it to yourself? This is the rumor report, man. Oh, okay. Well, let's start some more rumors. <laughs> I mean, it's over. It's a wrap. That's it's it. No more choice to it. Mix. Go ahead, Envy. Why y'all do I this to me? I can't believe you said he's not cute. You I did. didn't say he wasn't cute. That's not what he said back in the day. Ten years ago, I guess this, I guess this is the reboot. So take it back and <laughs> say that he's cute now. <laughs> the reboot, your origin story is different. I'm, I'm not saying he's cute. I'm not saying he's not cute. He's somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I'm not messing with you. <laughs> he's just Like your sexuality. He's <laughs> oh somewhere in the goodness. middle. It's on the spectrum. <laughs> Ew, what was that? <laughs> How Envy sounded when he first met Clue. <laughs> Y'all not going to make me gay today, all right? It's not going to happen. I'm this sorry, Clue. I don't know why they do this. You know what? He'd be minding his business. The People's Choice <laughs> mixes up next. You know Clue hates when y'all do this he to him. He does hate when you do that. I've done nothing to Clue. <laughs> you know, I'm not messing with that y'all. That is not my origin It's The People's story. Choice mixes up next. Get your request. It's the bre- I hate y'all. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Leaving a child in a hot vehicle can lead to their death very quickly. Set cell phone reminders or place something you'll need in the back seat so you don't forget your child is in the car. Look for your baby before you lie. DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. And let me shout out to Houston. Of course, my car show's going down this Sunday. And let me just tell uh, all the residents and everybody in Houston, you know, me and Trey and Lynn and Mr. Rogers and Bumby, we're going back and forth. Those are my brothers. There is no problems. There is no... Somebody's like, oh, it's going to be like an East Coast, West Coast beef. No, we're just having fun. That is my brother. I speak to Trey every day. Over a I, damn car show? Yes. The like, they, like they, I don't know what they thought, but th- those are my brothers. Like, we're just having fun. It's different car cultures. Of course, I'm from New York, so, you know, we're bringing the New York culture. They're Houston, Houston cultures. We're, we are family. It's not. It's, it's no problems. And people are like, oh, are they beefing? No, no, that's my brother. Like, we're, we are cool. I come to all his events. He comes to mine. We're just having fun with the car show. So if you haven't got your tickets, go on out and get your tickets, and uh, it's a family fun day. Also, shout to Kirk Franklin for joining us this morning. Yes, that was an amazing interview. I love talking to Kirk Franklin. Yeah, he was very honest, very and he open. Well, he has no problem being transparent about anything. I've never heard him be like, I don't want to talk about that. Right. So shout to uh, Kirk Franklin. And also Jessica Nabongo. Uh, she's an author. She has the book, The Catch Me If You Can. She's the uh, first black woman to travel to every country. That's 195 countries. How she don't have a TV show, a travel show? She got one coming up? Oh, she does? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. She does. She announced that on here. And mm-hmm. like we said, this book was with National Geographic. So mm-hmm. that's a big deal. All right, so make sure you pick up the book and we'll be back with the positive note. Jambo. 
morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne, you got a positive note? I do. And before we do the positive note, man, I just want to tell everybody uh, the Tribeca Film Festival is still going on. Um, you know I have a movie at the Tribeca Film Festival that I executive produced called 88. Uh, our last screening is this Saturday at 2.15 p.m. at the Village East by uh, Angelica. Uh, here in New York City. So if you want to go get tickets for that, uh, just go to TribecaFilm.com slash Films88. Or you can just go to my Instagram, C to God, C-T-H-A-G-O-D, and the link to purchase tickets for that are in my bio. Okay? Okay. Now listen, the positive note is simply this. Uh, some of you are unaware just how amazing you really are. The way you make people laugh, the way you lift others up, are spread love all right you do this even though you are struggling too and i think that makes you such a effing beautiful human being and i just want to remind you of that thank back you. today thank you shut up breakfast club bitches y'all finished or y'all done the breakfast club your mornings will never be the same Angela Yee here. The General Insurance is a quality insurance company that's been saving people money for nearly 60 years. Switch to The General and you could save over $500. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc. and Insurance Agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. I don't go. Nah, I just do it for the that are trying to see a million for they die. What up?